What is up everyone on YouTube and today I just want to talk about the Epic Dash event in Epic 7. Mostly, pretty much almost entirely inspired from this Reddit post on the Epic 7 subreddit that I happened to come upon today. And this post basically had people rate, you know, whether you know they thought this event was 10 out of 10 to even 0 out of 10, which I don't really understand because it's just free stuff. But basically everyone pretty much says that it is 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10. I also voted for the 10 out of 10, mostly because I think it is close to that because it's just free stuff. However, I personally think it's not perfect. There are some things that, you know, of course, I think Smilegate can do better. I'm not saying that it was a bad event by any means. It was an amazing and awesome event. But there were some things that I experienced while playing this event, and many of you guys probably did as well, that kind of, you know, I wish was a little bit different. But overall, still want to thank Smilegate for this event. It was one of the best events, probably, probably the best event we've ever had for an anniversary and just in general. And we just got a ton of free stuff from this event in general. So as you guys know, this is what the event looks like. And let's just start off with the obvious pros. So we do get a ton of energy, which is great. You get 100 free daily energy. Awesome. We also have this buff event that is continuously going on. This is probably one of the best parts. We just get um, all the runes that we need. You can enter spirit altars of all elements, which is extremely, 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 extremely nice. Right? You don't have to wait to farm runes for characters, um, you know, by waiting for the altar to open up. You also, of course, get additional rift equipment, additional crafting materials, AP and runes, just basically all the buff events going on at the same time for pretty much the entirety of this event, which was about six weeks. Also, the best part, in my opinion, is that we got these five free galaxy summons here every single day, and by reaching certain milestones here, what would actually happen is you would just get a ton of free rewards. I don't know why it took me back to the um, main page here, but if we go back here, you can see uh, we got four to five star uh, artifact and hero summon tickets. Then closer to the end at 60, we get a five star artifact summon ticket. We get a five star hero summon ticket. And then we get the first time ever seen five star moonlight summon ticket. Everyone got a free random moonlight five star just by logging on, which was amazing. So very, very nice event. You know, just a way to get a free ML5 star. And honestly, you probably got a ton more as well because we got 150 total um, Galaxy Summons and it's 2.5%. So you're pretty much on average going to get like two-ish, which is very, very good. Um, so very, very happy about that. We did get a ton of free MLs. And also, you know, this treasure storage event, um, I'm not going to talk about it now because I don't think it's that great. Let's actually talk about that when I talk about the cons. But, you know, going on with the pros even more, of course, we have all these amazing rewards, right? We get this five-star artifact selector. We get all of this gear down here. We get um, also just like random five-star here summon tickets. So all in total, we probably got around 35-star units, you know, 20 to 35-star units just by doing everything, uh, just by chance or by luck. And also from the summon tickets and from the galaxy summons, you can see there's even more down here. You get the special five-star covenant hero selector. This is amazing because uh, not only can you choose limited heroes, Actually, no, you can't choose limited heroes. Not only can you uh, choose heroes, but what you can actually do is get them at plus 15 fully awakened at level 60, which is amazing. You don't have to build them at all. Uh, all you have to do is slap equipment on them, and, and they're pretty much good to go. Now, as you can see, if we keep going down the weeks, you get artifact selectors here, which is very nice as well. We get even more special covenant hero selectors. You can see I'm still on the week 5 where you get another special covenant hero selector, so I'll get to choose another one that's fully awakened. And at week 6, of course, we get even another one. So you get a ton of free units. At the end of this, you get another selector as well. So you can see we get a ton of selectors, right? So this is amazing. Um, for players that have been playing the game for a long time, it's not as great for you because you're probably only, only going to benefit from like one, two, or even three of these special covenant here selectors. But for newer players, this is a godsend gift. You get a ton of units that you need for free, which is very, very important for new player progression. And on top of that, we're getting all these missions to do to get a ton of energy, which you also need to do to progress your pass in daily and weekly mission form. You also get a ton of these catalysts. And you can see, you know, I've been building characters throughout this event, um, and I still have a ton of these catalyst chests. I have 84 of the rare ones and 39 of the epic ones, so more than enough to build multiple characters, which is insane. And catalysts are a very annoying thing to farm, especially for newer players, and I think Smilegate hit the nail on the head here by giving this out to newer players as a reward instead of just giving extra energy like they did with daily ones. So, a ton of good rewards. I was super happy about this. 
Let's now talk about the bad things. Actually, another good thing is this Rift Otherworldly chest. Basically, you get a pretty good high equipment score um, equipment from this chest that spawns after you clear Rift. This was also a very nice way to get some extra gear. Now let's talk about the negatives. Uh, there were some negatives about this event, in my opinion. You guys might disagree, but I'm just going to say my opinion here because, honestly, I think these negatives were pretty annoying. There weren't really, like, you know, negatives, like, bad to my like, gameplay or anything like that. It just felt like there was always that fear of missing out, and I just felt like the biggest one for me was I felt like I had to play the game a lot more. So usually, because I content create for Epic 7, I don't really play that much to be honest. I only play to do my dailies and stuff like that, but with this event and how it's set up, I think Smellgate really wanted players to play a lot. And you can see here just from the event, from the Epic Dash we get 100 extra energy, and from all the daily rewards we get 50, 150, 250, 350, uh, 400. So we get 500 ep extra energy from this event, which is crazy. And even though we get this quick battling, this does not work for Rift. So I'm basically just sitting here with my client open, my emulator open, just farming, trying to get the day done. And even then, when you're farming Rift, which is basically the biggest way to get really good gear, especially with this otherworldly chess event going on, what ends up happening is you can't actually do all these missions right away, right? Uh, what I mean by that is you'll probably get stuck at like the 10 mark, and then after that you'll have to do other stuff. You also have to do 5 arena battles, so um, basically to get to that 20, to get all these, uh, the dash EXP, which you really, really need to fill this out, you need to just like sit here, get energy from other sources, maybe do some side stories and stuff like that, which of course is just playing the game, but compared to normal, I felt like I had to play the game a lot more. Also, on top of that, uh, you'll see here that this epic dash exp that you get i feel like it needs to be higher it feels like if you miss just one day or one weekly mission you fall behind and when you fall behind what you actually have to do you can see i'm already pretty behind here what you actually have to do is buy ranks with skystones and these are very expensive one rank is a hundred um so what will end up happening is if you don't play every day if you miss like a day or two or even a week due to like real life stuff you'll have to spend skystones to actually purchase the rewards and Honestly, you do want to purchase these, right? Even just one of these special selectors, it's worth way more than like the Skystones you're putting in. So you definitely want to buy it. But the thing is, it feels really bad to waste your Skystones on this because it should be something you should get for free because it's an event. It's an event. Um, but I guess, you know, at least they do have a way to purchase ranks, so that's a good thing. Uh, if they didn't have this, this would be a huge issue, but I guess they did think that some people won't be able to complete it. And you can buy your ranks, which is pretty cool. Um, but I still think, you know, what they should have done is most likely just scaled this down a little instead of having 10, 15, 20. I think having 1, 5, 10 would have been fine in like 3 arena battles. Um, you know, because people are going to play the game regardless because of the event. But just doing this kind of made me, you know, in the first like 2 weeks I was very excited. But I quickly burned out because uh, I had to, you know, leave my client open for so long and check it. And all the meanwhile, because you're farming so much and with all the buffs, your inventory is just constantly full with equipment, so you just have to keep, you know, going through and, you know, um, making sure that your equipment is good and, like, you know, disenchanting or, I guess, extracting stuff and selling stuff. So for me, during this event, uh, I just felt like I had to wait, or not waste, but invest a lot more time. Also, a big thing is the rewards are very nice, don't get me wrong, but some of the rewards are very questionable. For example, these pre-enhanced equipments are just very bad. Now, you might say, oh, for early game players, it's very good. Yes, that's true. But you're going to quickly realize, once you start farming hunts, this equipment becomes irrelevant pretty quickly for PvP. For PvE, it's still usable. But if you ever jump into PvP, you're not going to really ever use any of these pieces. So although they're very good PvE pieces, um, these pieces just aren't that great. For comparison, if you look at my PvP gear, I'm not going to show you like the best of the best PvP gear I have. Let's just scroll down like halfway, right? You're going to see some of this gear is like, you know, 97-ish, um, right? If I go down even further, it's in order, by the way, from highest to lowest equipment score. Like, even the purple gear here is like 94. Uh, compared to like the 87 you get here, it's just not really good. So for me, as a player that's been playing for a while, uh, I didn't get any benefit out of this. I literally just sold them or extracted them right away. Um, so I think what they should have done is probably bumped it up to something that's like a little more usable, like 92, you know, equipment score would be very nice. And I know I'm nitpicking here because, of course, it helps out newer players. But even for newer players, I feel like you'll stop using that gear pretty quickly and you won't ever really use it for PvP. However, this gear here that you get, that starts at 
equipment score of 40, amazing. I personally wish that they did that for every single piece of equipment. Maybe they thought that was overkill and that we would be and that we will be getting too much equipment. But you know, the gap between like this fully enhanced plus 15 to this like um you know baseline 40 equipment score where was it like weapon or whatever pieces that were available it's just huge right this is just way way better and i kind of wish they did this, this for all the equipment but yeah not too sure let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below and last but not least another big con about this for me was this epic equipment thing this was such a bait i think new players get baited by this because it's like epic equipment right you just go in you get a free one you get to choose the set but this these pieces are terrible so you know i wish you know they kind of maybe just made this a little bit better or at least made it you know just regular epic equipment that you can collect like every uh, day like maybe five entries per day that'd be a lot better than the current system uh, where it's kind of like rift but limited but you get better gear um but hopefully you know this does get improved on in the future honestly i think it was still the best event we've had but there were some things that I really noticed that were glaringly obvious to me. And I think the biggest one was the time sync and the equipment that they gave out. So yeah, I know I've been like kind of yapping, but just want to talk about this event. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this event overall. And I'll see you guys next video.